Hello, Micron fans, and welcome to this second day of the tournament cast for the 2013 Christmas tournament. We're going to be continuing with the round one games. We saw yesterday Vermine versus Haiku and J Raccoon versus Electro. Today we're going to be watching Shock versus Sharadon and Shadow Fury versus Aragant. That is myself versus Aragant. We'll be starting out with Shaka versus Sharadon on Tomb of Heroes. So Shalka is starting out in the east side of the map. Sorry, Sheridan starting on the east side of the map, and Shalka is starting out in the west side of the map. Sheridan going for Vekir. Shalka is our random player. I did actually look it up. He is the one playing random in this match. The game chooses for him to play Vekir. And he's well, hasn't started doing anything yet. Sheridan, on the other hand, has not done anything unusual. So point out, we haven't really seen Sheridan play in a while, nor with Shalka, though Shalka. I did have a match more recently with him, but yeah, Sheridan, I haven't actually seen him play in a few months. I'm not sure what he is up to. He is a Vekir main, but unfortunately, he hasn't really been on a lot of replay casts recently, so I'm not sure how his style is. I know he's typically one to enjoy foundation healing and foundation rushing and air units, but that's not unusual for Vekir. It's something fairly common. Shalka, on the other hand, He's kind of a wild card just because he does like playing random. That alone is bizarre. And it, he is going for a couple Zion Vera. I think he might be expecting an early rush. Although, he's probably, he might be also going for an early depot and then needing that extra Zion Vera just for the Zion Pulsar early on. Could be either way. But it's going to be interesting to see what he does do. Sharon, on the other hand, is actually getting... Well, Shock is scouting him out, but Sharon has not... He's got to be sent out something. No, he hasn't sent out any scouts yet. I I don't know what Sharadan is up to, but surprisingly, he's not... Okay, he's probably now sending out scouts. He's just making sure he knows when he left off, but there we go. Now he's sending his scouts. Little unusual. That must have been a mistake on his part, because normally you'd send those scouts out earlier. Anyway, nothing unusual thus far, really. Neither player deviating too much from the norm. Typically, you see the opening scouting, you see the opening... Attacks. The Shin and Tethvir are what's sent out to scout. And Sharadan focusing heavily on economy, as is Shalka. Shalka getting much, much earlier Q Plasma. An early foundation as well. We're three minutes in. I expect this to become a depot fairly soon. He's going to very soon have enough. There is the depot. And I'm guessing this Zion Beer will become a Zion Pulsar. One of the two, at least. Though Shalka appears to be going for a much more aggressive opener than Sharadan is. And on Tomb of Heroes, well, that actually could work. Tomb of Heroes is a fairly wide map, but it's not a map that's actually got that long of a rush distance, given its size. I mean, it's still a fairly long rush distance, but a pure economy build is safe, but not completely impregnable. It is possible to attack with a rush, and attack with especially a proxy attack. I'm curious to see how this will pan out. I think Shaka will be able to deal a fair amount of damage to Sharadan, and Sharadan no, it doesn't really seem prepared. He's He has fought Shalka's forces here in the past, but he hasn't really gotten a whole lot changed. And it looks like... Actually, no! Shardan is actually looking for... Shardan has seen what Shalka's up to. He knows Shalka has an early depot, and he knows that he has to worry about being attacked early on by Zion Pulsars. Or possibly Zion Churches, but probably Pulsars. And there it goes. At the three-minute mark, Shardan is also building a foundation. Actually, building a couple foundations. It looks like he is getting prepped for defense. Not sure if he's going to go for auto defense as well. He's not necessarily going to be ill served by that, but I'm curious what he's going to go for. Is he going to go for a depot? He doesn't have any Q Plasma resource processors on the map, so he's certainly not focused on that yet. He's just focused on the foundations for defense right now. Like I said, Sharadan does love his foundations, so, or apparently he loves his foundations. Now, Shalka, on the other hand, continuing along with the strategy, even though it has been spotted. No, actually, it looks like. It has been spotted, but he's lost the Zion Beer that he was planning on using, or possibly planning on using, to become a Zion Pulsar. This is interesting. Yes, it looks like... Where's that second Zion Beer? There was a second Zion Beer that Shalka had. Ah, he sent it out to attack directly rather than going for the depot. Interesting. So right now, Shardan only has a Zion Beer in his base to defend with, and Shalka coming in further in the future. However, Shardan does have time to respond to this. He can go back. Actually, he already has gone back. He could easily change around his actions. He could easily respond to this if he knows what's going on. He might be ignoring it because it's further in the future and he figures it's going to be echoed out. But we'll see once he notices the blue time wave goes along and does not take this attack away. 
We'll see what he does then. It looks like at this point he's not too suspicious about it. He knows that Shaka was trying to go for a depot. He's apparently not too concerned yet, but he's probably going to be concerned now. He sees a ton of damage on the timeline. That's not going away with a blue time wave. In fact, it appears to be getting worse. His own damage is going away. The blue here is Sharadan's damage, and that is fading. Now, Sharadan going for an early depot as well. The two, 240 mark, he is definitely moving to respond to this. Getting some Zion Pulsers up early, about a minute before Shalka starts to hit. And Shalka's attack is continuing to happen, so Shalka has not changed this at all. And further from the future, he is dealing a fair amount of harassment damage, but these foundations are doing a nice job healing up the, the resource processors and buying Sheridan some time. Though admittedly, at this point with the depot, we'll see a Zion Pulsar pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. Or once enough resources are available, we will. No, that's for Foundation. I guess the Zion Gear will become a Zion Pulsar pretty soon. And Chardon jumping back again. It looks like he... Well, we'll see what he's up to later. It's hard to predict what he's up to right now, but it is easy enough to see what is going on further in the future. Chardon is actually... He has pulled his forces back. He pulled the scouting forces that he had back into his main, and he's able to defend fairly well against what is coming, but... It appears that he was planning on going for vehicles, so I expect that we'll be seeing that fairly soon. And there it is! There's that Zion Pulsar I was looking for! And it will be a perfect defense! Oh, except the Shinbeer is going to die. That's unfortunate. Actually, there we go. Now the Zion Pulsar is moving into position. It sh won't save the Shinbeer, but it will still be a good defense. I'm pretty sure the resource processors will not be affected too much. They won't die, that's for sure. But Shardan wants to make absolutely sure this is going to work perfectly, while Shalka, on the other hand... Let's check his base again. He's not going for depot anymore. He's changed that up completely. His attack that he has right here, that's his main focus, and I think... Oh boy, is he going to try to go for this again? He's getting another Zion Veer. He's going for a depot as well, so it's slightly later, but he hasn't changed the strategy too much. Forcing Chardon away from an economic-focused opening, and jumping back to the 520... No, jumping forward to the 526 mark, 530 mark, actually, and moving forward with Zion Pulsers... Now, Shalka thus far has not been attacking in the past, and it looks like this is no different. His attack is hitting in the present. There it is. This is about the 654 mark. Zion Pulsers are hitting, but Shardan can easily scout this now. He knows what's going on. I find it a little unusual. Most players will typically fire off attacks near the unplayable past edge to give their opponent that much less time to prepare. Now, it's not entirely a bad idea to attack further to the future, especially if you do both further in the future and in the past, and somewhere in the middle, just overwhelm your opponent's information. But also, if you're doing something that completely throws them off, that is, you're attacking in such a way that they're going to respond in one way, and then you attack to deal with that weakness. An example, I suppose, would be if you send in some comm hubs, and then your opponent builds anti-air units to try to get rid of the flying comm hubs, and then suddenly you rush in with Zion Pulsers or other anti-ground units, and you win that way. Not necessarily the safest strategy, though, that one, actually, but... Possible misinformation. That's a possible way of dealing with this. However, for the most part, players will typically just attack you in the playable pass. So, Shalka doing this is unusual. And Shardan is also actually doing this. He's not trying to hide his intentions either near the playable pass edge. Neither player is too worried about their opponent countering. But Shalka does have a counter. He has himself a Shin Turcher. He's also going to have to face probably Teth Turchers fairly soon. Shardan and Shalka both have aerial control centers about the 630 mark. And Shardan has a bit of a disadvantage right now. He doesn't have the air units. Though neither player really has anti-air at this point. Bit surprised neither has gone for any Teth units. We should see that fairly sh shortly though. I'm sure it's just a matter of time. Shalka has his Shin Turcher up. And Shardan will likely build up... Oh, he's building up Shin Turcher as well. But I'm guessing a Teth Turcher will be coming up to deal with that. Or maybe Teth Balser, but probably Teth Turcher. Like I said before, Sharon apparently likes his air units. But that's also potentially from months ago. At any rate, Shaka will be able to hold this off, so he's doing okay. Sharon, on the other hand, also having to deal with some Zion Pulsers, and will likely be... There he is. There he's moving in to deal with them. And Shaka's attack being fended off without just dealing all that much damage. Getting rid of one of the Zion Pulsers, though, at the cost of two. However, being that Shaka has this early Shin Turcher... That might actually have been worth it. Although, now he's going to have to deal with Shin Turcher versus Shin Turcher and Shin Beer. And I'm sure Shardan is planning on building up more air units once he gets the resources for it, or anti-air units once he gets the resources for it. I don't know if he's... He must be aware of this now. He is aware of the Shin Turcher. He knows it's there. He's 
We'll see if he does anything to respond. He Has he jumped back to respond to this? I think he has. Yes, he has changed... No, it's still Zion Pulsar. I thought it was a Teth Pulsar. Never mind then. Okay, so apparently Shardon is just trying to revise this here to make sure that he does... Does defend against these Zion Pulsars coming in. And Shalka... Okay, this is another form of misinformation. Like I said, misinformation is definitely a key thing you can do with this. The other simpler one is simply direction. But Sheridan has enough current energy to deal with this, to move his units into position, to get rid of the Zion Pulsar. So despite the misdirection, Sheridan still is able to defend. However, it's a much stronger attack this time. Shalka able to get rid of both Q-Plasma RPs on Sheridan's side. So not a bad attack by Shalka. And definitely good misinformation on his part. Very cleverly done there. So Shalka has more Teth units. Looks like he's going to be getting, getting anti-air first. He doesn't have the Q-Plasma for it yet, but he's likely to get it soon. He does have one Q-Plasma RP to Sharadan's possibly zero. Shalka jumping further forward, so it's a bit harder to tell. And Shalka getting a healing foundation up, but... No, has he... He's undone his attack. No, he isn't... Sorry, never mind. He hasn't undone his attack. He's escaped after attacking. Never mind. This was actually a successful attack. He did get rid of these resource processors here. Because that was a pretty big thing to have gotten rid of. And the fact is, he did manage to get rid of it, so... Sharadon is low on Q Plasma, has no Q Plasma income at the moment, while Shalka has quite a bit. He has one, three Q Plasma resource processors. Shalka is doing just fine, and I expect his Teth Churches will be coming up shortly. He has the Q Plasma for it. He might not be focusing on that point in space, though. I think he's not focusing on his base. He might be focusing more on his attack right here. However, let's check his point of view. It looks like construction is occurring further to the present, so I expect that will be the Teth Churcher in question, and it looks like... No, more Zion Veers and Teth Veer. He hasn't quite turned them into vehicles yet. That was at the present, by the way. That was about three minutes up from where we are. But back at the 930 mark, Shardon is taking a lot of damage. His Shin Turtle taking a lot of damage from here. Able to heal up, though. Nice use of depot healing, but Shardon still low on Q Plasma and very high on, li on Liquid Crystal. He could build Teth Veer and... Obviously, he could build more resource processors. I see he is actually expanding to the south. That is good. He wants to expand there, get more Q Plasma, because this north side is not safe. Very clearly, Shalka has. I mean, Shalka is being pushed away, but it's still pretty clear that the north side isn't the safest part of the map for Sharadan. However, Shalka, is he going for this expansion? I think he is. Yes, he's actually going to try to intercept it, although looks like he was a bit too late to do that. However, Shardon is still taking a lot of damage. Shalka is actually expanding across the map much... Well, not that much better yet than Shardon is, but he has definitely pushed more forward. Riskier move, but Shalka definitely has more map control. And there is our Teth Tercher, as well as a Shin Tercher popping up as well with it. And I expect another Shin Tercher... No, actually, Teth Veer are going directly into combat. Interesting. These Teth Veer are not being transformed to vehicles... Or not being used to pilot vehicles first, just attacking directly. Well, that will be interesting, but I expect that they will take a while to get in. And at this point, Shardon is going for a good mix of ground and air, so I expect that we will be seeing... And actually, getting some Teth Pulsars now, too. So I expect we will be seeing those Teth Veer not do a great job, just because there aren't a lot of anti-air units... Sorry, not a lot of air units to deal with. And anti-air units, however, are in place for Shardon. Shardon will be able to defend this just fine. He sh might lose a Teth Pulsar in the process, but... Once that becomes a Teth Veer, it'll be much scarier. Teth Veer are the most powerful four-cost anti-air unit that Vekir has. The only downside for them is a lack of health. Though, honestly, at this point, there's so much defense coming in here that I think Shardan is really going to be holding this off once again. But Shalka... No, he's attacking directly with Teth Veer. He's not... I was kind of suspecting he was going to be going around the map, expanding a bit more, just using these attacks... These constant attacks, after each one, just go over to another expansion and start building RPs. He will find out that Shalka... Sir, Shalka will find out that Shardan has expanded to the south, building up some Q-Plasma RPs there. Probably will start try to get rid of it. Shardan has quite a bit of Liquid Crystal, though, so he, he can easily make use of all these resources once the Q-Plasma comes in. And, of course, continue to expand once he breaks out. But the thing is that Shalka has, to his advantage, is that he does have more pressure put on Shardan. Shardan has been pressured pretty much entirely to his main base. Shalka has a bit more freedom to move around. Though he isn't really using it. And he's, like I said, it's a bit more freedom. At this point, Shardan is getting a lot of units, a lot of counter units. 
And I think Shaka might be a little bit afraid of expanding, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, he might be thinking, well, at this point, Sheridan might just get enough units to break out and destroy my expansions if I'm being too thin on my contain. And that's not... An, that is a legitimate concern, actually. He's got... If that is his concern, there are... Some, well, there's not a huge amount of units, but there are enough units that Shardan could stage a bit of a breakout. He is taking some damage to his Q Plasma infrastructure, while Shalka is not... And Shalka actually saving quite a bit of money. I think he's going for Gate Tech. I think he is saving the money for Gate Tech. This is usually why players save this much money. And there it is! Gate Tech being built up at the 13-minute mark for Shalka. Shardan, on the other hand... He could go for Gay Tech. He is further in the future. He can definitely afford it. Seeing more of Shalka's attack forces come in and apply more pressure. Now, once Shalka gets Gay Tech, then he can very easily expand across the map with impunity. And it looks like he's not doing that yet. Still attacking directly with infantry. We saw how this attack played out in the present, or rather, it didn't play out that well. Oops. Okay, Jericho has gone to the Implayable Pass for some reason. But anyway, at the present, we do see that... Shalka's forces didn't do a whole lot, so Shalka probably won't be committing to that attack. Or if he is, it's misdirection once again. And we have seen that he does do a pretty good misdirection job. Though it was countered, but still, that was not a bad job in the first time. Shardan is coming around to attack, to counterattack, and Shalka, is he prepared for this? That is the big question. He doesn't have a lot of anti air, he does have a lot of Teth Veer, some Shin Veer. He is getting his Gate Tech, but. That makes this just that much better of a time for Shardan to attack, and Shardan will have to deal with Teth Beer and sorry, Teth Pulsar and Teth Turcher. The Turcher class, Teth Turcher, Shin Turcher, against the Shin Turcher here and the Zion Pulsars. I think Shaka will be able to defend just fine, especially with, yeah, Shaka will have no problem defending against this. While Shardan, on the other hand, he is building up a lot of units. I think he's going to go for a counter, a breakout counter attack. Now is the time, and he is going for it, although admittedly he's not sending all of his units out. He's still a bit too pressured, still a bit too concerned that he's going to get hit hard if he tries to move out. And Chalka has gone to gate tech. He is getting a slipgate, and that slipgate, once it's done, we'll see what it's up to. Is it going to go for chronoporting these guys? I think Chalka does not have enough money to actually chronoport. No, but it's very close. He has almost enough Q-plasma to chronoport these guys. And, okay, he's trying to chronoport them. He is not going to chronoport all of them but he should be able to chronoport most of them. Yes, he is chronoporting a couple of them to the Unplayable Past, or into the Unplayable Past, alongside this Zion Pulsar attack, which is a bit risky. The Teth Churchers are, or Teth Pulsar rather, right there, but the Zion Pulsar can help get rid of them. Nice support there, and actually, looks like Shaka will be able to get rid of, well, no, not really. This Zion Pulsar unable to deal enough damage to the Teth Pulsar to get it out, that is... That is painful. It will hamper Shardan a little bit. It has destroyed a couple of his units. But I don't know how dependent Shardan was on that because Shardan going for a counterattack. Massive counterattack, actually. The first part of the counterattack is hitting closer to the unplayable pass, but looked like he was going for a second part of it later. Nearer to the present, that is. But, of course, like I said before, that attack has a lot of counters coming in. And. Shaka ultimately losing a Shin Turcher, but getting rid of both Zion Pulsars beforehand. All he needs is some Teth units, and not sure how much is going to matter, though. Shardan is walking all of his forces into Shalka's base to try to deal with this. So Shaka, on the other hand, he can, of course, Chronoport back to defend. He has attacked with these units. Well, actually, these units have been Chronoported. They have been echoed out. In fact, they won't be here once the blue time loop comes along, so this defense is going to be that much weaker. Unless they likely won't be. Let's see, Blue Time comes along, and no, they are in fact here. I guess they didn't get chronoported. Interesting. Alright, so these are not the units that got chronoported, apparently. Perhaps it's just the Zion Pulsar. At any rate, Shardan has a much larger army. It is, however, a ground-bound army, mostly anti-ground, but... Shalka needs to have a lot more forces defending against this, I think. Yeah, he has... Well, the Shin Turtles, and with Debo Heal, does give him a really good advantage. The fact is, the Zion Pulsars cannot do anything against the Shin Turtles. They can attack the base with impunity, relatively, but they can't hit the Shin Turchers. The Teth Turchers will be able to, sorry, Teth Turcher and Teth Pulsers, Teth Turcher, Teth Pulser, will be able to deal with those once Shardan gets in, and when that does happen, it will be quite powerful. It will deal quite a lot of damage to him, too, and Shardan getting his own Gate Tech probably will skip these units in once Gate Tech has been finished, and it is almost done! Gate Tech has been completed. 
getting rid of the units that Shalka had set up for an attack before skipping in, and I expect skipping in will happen right now. Or very soon. Sheridan having Gate Tech is either going to happen now, or he's going to bookmark this and happen an attack near the Impalable Past Edge. One of the two. Shalka does have to deal with his force in the present, though. He does know what's coming. He does have his counter forces set up. He does have a Chronoported set of counter forces set up, too, and this means that an Unplayable Past attack coming in from Shardon, that is an Unplayable Past Edge attack that he might be going for, is going to have to deal with these Zion Pulsers, which it wouldn't have otherwise had to deal with. Still, the Tether Turchers will be able to get around it, but he... And he is getting Shin Turchers, but the thing is, he's going to have a much harder time in the Ground War. There are now Zion Pulsers. They will be dealing quite a bit of damage, and that will... Well, they might be dealing quite a bit of damage. Bear in mind, those Zion Pulses were Chrono Porter back. They could... Their, I guess, initial forms, the earlier versions of themselves that get Chrono Porter back, could be killed before they Chrono Port, meaning this whole thing could become a paradox country very soon. However, that has not yet happened, or at least not from Shalka's point of view, but from Shalka's point of view, it has indeed happened, and Shalka... Actually, no. Never mind. Other way around. Shalka's point of view, it's happening. Shalka's point of view, it hasn't happened yet. From Shalka's point of view... He is actually dealing quite a bit of damage. He's gone for a counterattack with Chronoport Teleport forces into Sheridan's base. So Sheridan, and this is at the Unplayable Past Edge, by the way. Sheridan is taking a lot of damage. And Shalka just needs to defend this attack. He should be able to do so, although it's a little bit hard to say how much he's committed to it. He has destroyed Sheridan's base. He does have to deal with Sheridan's army, and looks like he is doing exactly that. Teleporting his units back to deal with Sheridan's army before it strikes. I think Shalka has this game in the bag. And these are the parents of these Zion Pulses chronoporting, so there is no chance for a Paradox, a very low chance for Paradox. Sheridan does not appear to be moving attack to cause a Paradox, probably not aware it's going to happen. Likely not aware that the pre chronoportees are over below the depot, or south of the depot, where he's attacking from the north. So he has to deal with these guys, and apparently that's not going so well. The Test Searchers are doing a great job, however. They are taking care of the stuff that is being used, and it looks like Shardon I don't think it's to deal with the pre-corner parties yet. They were chronoported successfully, so these Zion Pulsers are still a concern. And auto defense actually coming in handy, getting rid of one of the Teth Turchers, the Teth Pulse, or Teth Veer rather, getting eliminated entirely by Zion Pulsers. And the last Teth Turcher going down very quickly, and this is a game Shardon has lost. I think he's been outright eliminated at this point. Or very close to. He has built some defenses though. Built a Zion Turcher for defense. Very cleverly done. It's still gonna actually you know what that might have changed things considerably that Zion Turcher looks like it got rid of the Zion Pulsers that were sent back here meaning Shardon has a much better position for this counterattack into Shalka's base though Shalka still has a lot of forces he doesn't have a lot of Teth forces not a lot of anti-air and not building it either he has the resources to do so but he hasn't actually done so meaning that these Zion Pulsers are gonna go down but unfortunately these Teth Turchers will not go down quickly enough I think no, they will go down quickly enough. Never mind. They are going down just barely quickly enough. It's close call. Shardon did a nice Valiant effort there with the Teth Turcher. Sorry, the Zion Turcher. I don't know why I'm getting the... I, don't, I should not be getting Becky units mixed up like that. That's just... That is just sad. But Teth Pulse are coming in for Shalka. Teth Turchers are going to go down for Shardon. And then Shardon will be throwing in the towel. This is game. So that is... That is game one. Shaka has pretty much won it. Looks like he's going to finish off Sheridan, but I think Sheridan is... Not quite done yet. Has a Shin Beer. No, he's done. Okay, he's, he's throwing the towel. That is game. Wasn't entirely sure, but yes, that is the first game of the Shaka versus Sheridan match. So we'll have game two just in a minute or so. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to the second match of the Shalka vs. Sheridan Tournament Series, Round 1 of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. I'm Shadow 33 your commentator, continuing to be Shadow 33 and we shall have Game 2 on Desecrated Temple. I'll begin. Shalka, one last match, is in the east side of the map, while Sheridan is in the west side of the map. Cross position start, by the way, this... Oh, never mind. There we go, okay. Sheridan is in the west side of the map. Cross position start to point out, this is a four-player map, has four start positions. 
the east, the north here, the south, and the west. Where Shardan is going for Vekir, while Shaka has been chosen to play CISO. Excuse me. So Shaka, as I mentioned before, is the random player. So the game chooses for him what to play. And like I said, the game has decided he shall be playing CISO today. It has been decreed. And he's very quickly going for an expansion, too. He's going very quickly to the crates over by his main, essentially the natural expansion, while Shaka, on the other hand... It, wait. Hold on a sec. Yeah, sorry. Shaka's doing this. Shardan, on the other hand... Sorry. Last match, Shardan was in the right, so... Bear with me. Anyway, Shardan is still Vekir. He was always was Vekir. No change there. But he is going to be... Well... Not sure what he's going to be doing. He's going, for, going to go for economy. He got an early second Zion Beer. It looks like he is very quickly going over to the corner expansion and securing that. Interesting. I've never seen someone do that in this map, but that's not necessarily a bad idea. This corner expansion is very lucrative. It's actually pretty defensible, too. It's just not one that I've seen a lot of people actually make use of. Similarly, in the southeast corner, there's a similar expansion, but... Shalka going for a forward armory. I wouldn't really call it a proxy. It's nowhere near close enough to Shardan's base to be considered a proxy. But it is definitely more forward. And I can see Shalka's trying to be aggressive. Two importers and an early armory. I expect to have infantry rushing coming in pretty soon. Shalka just scouting out for Shardan. While Shardan not quite securing this. No, he is actually securing this yet. Yep, he is going for his resource processors over in the northwest. His main base has a few resource processors, but he is definitely focusing on expanding here, which, like I said, not a bad idea. And also, cleverly, as you can see, using a second Zion Veer. Point out that he did make a second Zion Veer to do this with, so his main base looks normal. A little bit underdeveloped for the timing, but since Akron does not have a super tightly developed metagame, and certainly not an encyclopedic knowledge of timings expected from players, Shalka won't necessarily know that Sharadan is up to something. He might suspect it. It is three minutes into the game, and there's only about half a dozen resource processors and no depot or anything. I should point out, we actually jumped back about a minute, but still, even at the four-minute mark in the game, there's only half a dozen resource processors and no depot. He might be suspicious of this. But he might also think that it's just, well, Akron is Akron. You don't always get the most updated information about your opponent, especially if you're attacking two minutes later than they are currently focusing. So you can't always assume that. While Shardan has set up a special ops, just checking that expansion over there, he's apparently expecting Shardan to expand over to the north. Possibly the south, too. He has the south covered. He's got... Okay, now this is what I'd call proxy. Importer and armory chain across. Actually, very nice use of these to get vision. He knows exactly what's going on along the south side of the map. And the north side of the map, he knows sort of if something's going to be there, but he does not know about where Shardan is actually expanding. He knows about Shardan not expanding to the south and definitely getting a lot of armories. He is, like I said, going to be pushing out a ton of infantry to attack Shardan with and Shardan getting hit pretty hard by this. On the other hand, Shardan has he, he has not started to build up a depot yet, not building a foundation, so he is reliant entirely on infantry right now for his own defense. Against a single special ops, that can work, but I... Well, it's kind of on a knife edge right now. Shard it could go either way. Shardan could be building more infantry or get a quick foundation. Even just a quick foundation, that would be healing. That's still good. But Shaka is going to be going for a heavy infantry attack. He is going to be relentless for the rest of the game from the looks of it, or at least for the next few minutes. Though, my guess is Shaka is expecting that a few minutes is all he is going to need. So, with that, Shardan is in a tight spot. He has defended against that special ops at some cost, heavily damaged his Zion Veer, but he can build a foundation to heal it up. And his expansion is still going on unimpeded, so if Shalka does not manage to break this down within the next, I'd say, three or four minutes, Shardan's going to have a massive economic advantage. Now, I should point out, Zion Pulsars are not great against about half a dozen... Be be below about half a dozen CISO infantry, Zion Pulsars can do okay, but... CISO infantry have a lot of firepower, so it's a little difficult for Zion Pulses to deal with them, especially if they spread out. If they're clumped up, the Zion Pulses' splash damage will just take them out. But if they are spread out, then the CISO infantry will win every time. It's kind of weird 
unless you experience it. Once you experience it, once you know, you know that is what is going to happen. But before that, it's kind of difficult. So going for Zion Balzer is a tricky decision. Now, Sharadan is, at the present, he is not focused on when Shalka is. And Shalka is actually focused much further in the past. And getting ground units, so he is focusing on infantry entirely. Ground units upgrades his marines. Upgrades mech weapons too, but upgrades marine weapons. His marines are definitely going to be able to deal with pretty much anything Shardan can throw at him, unless Shardan starts to go very quickly for vehicles. And like I said, Shardan is focused entirely on expansion. What would have been... Well, actually, he does have a Shin and Tethvir going out to try to deal with this marine here. Try to get rid of some of the expansion attempt, or rather, proxy attempt from Shalka. Not unwise. This could slow things down for Shalka and give Shardan a bit of breathing room. However, Shalka is inside the base here, and there aren't as many defensive units here. Zion fears all that Shalardan has to deal with this. And, oh, that was a bad time. Anyway. Shardan is going to be having to defend against this with a single Zion Veer, and I don't think he's going to have much of a chance. Let's see. I think that Special Ops is... This is close. No, Special Ops has one. Shardan is unfortunately getting hit by a very strong counterattack, having moved his forces out to try to stem the tide of Shalika's forces, unfortunately just making it worse. I was about to say before seeing this, it would have been kind of clever to have pulled out a Shin Veer over to the northwest, build a foundation there, and then while Shalka's burning down Shardan's main base, Shardan's already built up a much more developed base to the northwest, in a much more defensible territory, and already has set it up. So that is going to be... That would have been a potential way of going about it, but Shardan is not going for that, so he's not going to be able to just salvage this and distract Shalka with a fake base. I'm sure Shalka's gotten suspicious by now, but Desecrated Temple is a large map. He might not be suspecting the northwest corner. He has taken the southeast corner himself, and this Marine would be able to build a secondary base if needed if Shalka went... Sorry, if Shardan went for a secondary attack or a counterattack if he managed to do so, but... At this point, I don't think that's happening. Sharadan does have a depot foundation, but he doesn't have a depot. He doesn't have the money for a depot. He's not doing too well, unfortunately. He does, however, have income. That is something he has a lot of. He has an economic advantage over Shalka right now. It's not huge, but it still exists. And defense has been secured, so Sharadan can start building a depot. He can start taking advantage of his economic advantage. It's still risky. He's still pushing it. Shalka can still send a lot more forces, but he has lost an armor. Compared to what Shalka's ideal scenario was, there is one fewer armory. Maybe not the biggest thing in the world. However, there's also, I think, one or two fewer importers, and that is much bigger. That is a hard limit on how many infantry units he can build in a short period of time. But I think with two armories and an importer, he is still fine. Yeah, he is queuing up units at this point. He, he can afford to lose another importer, I think. So you can definitely afford to have lost that old importer. And switching over to factories, now this is where it's going to be tricky. Two proxy factories as well. Shalka still hasn't found the northwest side of the map. Shardan has a chance. He has some breathing room. He's using it to build foundations, which is not a bad idea. And there's a the depot. The spare foundations will help once he gets attacked or become aerial control center. So we're very quickly going to get aerial control center. Giving up with this tech. Shardan, he has fallen a bit behind, but probably not too much. Shalka went for this proxy, so both players, it's hard to really say for certain just how out of place things are compared to a normal game because this is not a normal game this is different you can't easily say oh well Shalk is behind or ahead or Sharon is behind or ahead because Sharon has a massive economic advantage Shalk has a massive military advantage where's Shalk's proxy there are. and Shalk does have enough units to get rid of some of the basic stuff that's likely to come up but with the aerial control center Zion pulsars are probably not the first thing to come up though with a Shin Vira I guess Shin Turchers but we don't see what Shardan is actually planning on doing. As Shardan, he's further in the future. He is going for Shin Turchers. He's not going for any Zion Pulsers, which is a good idea, given that Lancers are on the way. And we jump back... Or, jump forward. What? What? Okay, apparently Shalka had aborted ground units research earlier. Redid it. Okay, that's bizarre. Anyway, jumping back... Oh, sorry. This is Shardan's point of view. At the 715, 719 mark, where Shalka was starting his ground units research over at... This army, I guess. And Shalka is about two minutes up from here. He's been spending his entire game further in the future from Shardan. And Shardan, he... Okay, there's his depot. He is we're going to be taking a lot of damage from the infantry coming in. And this depot will not be up in time. This Shinbeer's 
making a valiant effort to defend against the units coming in, but it will not be enough. I think Shalka has this game. We'll see, though, if Shardon can manage to build up something. No, he can't build up any air units from here. The depot won't survive long enough to build up anything, even a Zion Pulsar. That will not be built. The depot will be going down before that happens. And Shardon has no backup base in the north. He has nothing. At this point, he couldn't even send out a Shinvir up in the north. He would have been spotted. There is no way he can get out of this. I think... Or very little I can think of he can get out of this. He doesn't have a lot of inventory being built up. He doesn't have a lot of resources to build inventory with. He doesn't really have a lot of current energy with which to convert QP into Liquid Crystal and then build inventory from there. So I think that this is going to be game. I think Shalka has won this tournament series. But I it's too close to call it. Yeah, we saw the Vermine versus Haiku game. That Vermine lasted for a very long time against a similar strategy. Though admittedly, there were fewer inventory units at the time in each wave. In this case, Shalka is going for one single big push rather than going for wave after wave. And given that there's no spare foundations, I'd say that Shardan really has no way to rebuild. However, he is trying to distract. He does actually have a bit more time for himself. Getting a Shin Pulsar, and no, he's he apparently realized that it didn't quite work out for him. So that is apparently game. I guess it's just a quite matter of time until Shardan says GG, and we move on to the next series. Hopefully not too long, but... Yeah, there's no way for Shardan to rebuild from here. All the destruction is in the unplayable past, and that is... That is game. Shalka, very nice use of CISO for map control and proxy. And that is the series. Shalka has won both... Odd. Anyway, Shalka has won... Nicely done, so that is going to be... Oops. That is going to be it. We have Shalka winning versus Shardan. So Shalka will be fighting Cybernetic Pony in round two. Shardan will be fighting whoever between Monkuki and Electro loses. Next series will be Shadow 333 versus Aragant. Stay tuned for that. We'll be back with that in just a few minutes.